Good evening. Welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, December 18th, 2017. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to an alumni of our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we'll move into the adoption of previous council meeting minutes. Can I get a motion to adopt the set of minutes from Monday, December 4th? Councilor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I would move that council approve the minutes of the city council meeting held Monday, December 4th, 2017, as presented. And thanks very much, Councilor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on those minutes? Any errors or omissions that we need to correct before we adopt them? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, and then we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that uh, Council adopt the agenda of as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, I just wanted, and I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I just want to check to make sure. I think we have an addition oh, sorry. with respect to yeah. public member appointments. Sorry, my apologies, with the That's addition fine. of 8.2 uh, in respect to um, committee and board appointments. Thank Thanks you. very much, Councillor Clayton. We spent all that time doing it. We should make sure it gets onto the agenda. Thanks very much for catching that. Uh, and so that's a motion for the adoption of the agenda. With that addition, any uh, discussion or debate about the agenda? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, and this brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda, an opportunity at every regular city council meeting for uh, anyone to come forward and address council on any community-related matter, so long as it isn't the subject of a public hearing, and I don't think we have any public hearings tonight anyhow. Um, but we did have one delegation let us know in advance uh, that they wish to present to council, and that was Mr. Baron Mans from Aquatera Utilities. Mr. Mans. Yeah, I'll just ask you to pull, there you go, you got her. You've been here before. And, and I'm here uh, this evening to speak in support of the uh, passage of the new utility bylaw that's before council this evening. Uh, I want to thank uh, city administration who's worked diligently in the updating of it. Uh, it's a bylaw that was developed decades ago and, and really this is the, fourth, the first major uh, refresh of it. And, and so it's uh, consolidated and more concise and clear. I think it's nine pages shorter than the last version. And um, uh, deals with uh, the expectations for both Aquaterra in terms of the services we provide as well as uh, expectations of our of our customers as well. Uh, the bylaw is consistent with the water and sewer components of, of um, other Aquaterra service areas like the county and, and Sexsmith. The solid waste component is unique to the cities as, as that's uh, the community where we provide those services in. Uh, with respect to solid waste, one of the changes is a, an expectation that all waste generated in the city be disposed of at the Aquaterra landfill. Uh, although there's no uh, enforcement mechanisms to that regard, it, it is an intention then that we would then work with the city and haulers uh, towards uh, achieving. Uh, and so um, I'm here to answer any questions from an Aquaterra pr perspective with respect to the bylaw. Okay, thanks very much for making yourself available, Mr. Mans. Any questions for Mr. Mans? I don't see anybody in the queue. Council? I don't see anybody in the queue. Thanks very much for making yourself available, Baron. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else that wish to come forward uh, to address council on any community-related matters? 
Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward to address council? Okay. Seeing nobody else rushing the stage, as it were, uh, I'll just uh, remind the community this opportunity exists at every regular city council meeting. Uh, we do appreciate it if you let us know ahead of time that you wish to present to council, um, but it certainly uh, isn't a requirement. Uh, so we'll move on, uh, close the delegation portion of our agenda, and we'll move on to there. from there. Uh, we have no public hearings. We have no unfinished business. That take us to item 8.1, capital and operating budget for 2018. Uh, I will look to the city manager uh, to kick us off or seeing uh, corporate services director, Ms. Walker. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, the report you see in front of you and um, the attachment um, budget uh, uh, were included in your uh, um, council packages for tonight's meeting, so I presume that you've read it. For those folks um, that are just tuning in over the web, um, this budget, uh, both operating and capital, represent um, the results of budget deliberations um, that occurred November 15th, 16th, and 17th. Um, it does honor uh, direction that we received from council at that time, and we have uh, respected those, um, th those wishes. So um, I would um, ask for uh, a motion that City Council adopt the 2018 operating budget as presented and that City Council adopt the 2018 capital budget as presented, um, understanding that within the capital budget, there was a condition that on the downtown rehabilitation phase three project, that um, it was subject to appropriate contribution levels by Aquaterra uh, Utilities. And I believe that information has been provided to Council. Okay, thanks very much, Ms. Walker, for that introduction. Council members, I think we've got both the hard copy and the electronic version that was in our package. Uh, I would look for a motion. Uh, we have to do both uh, separate motions, I believe, for each, uh, one for operating. And so that's where we'll start. Uh, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move the council approve the capital budget for 2018 as presented. Sure, I, I, I don't think it really makes a difference either or, but let's start with the operating. Uh, I think then I will the change that motion to I move the council approve the operating budget for 2018 as presented. Okay. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. So open for discussion and debate with respect to the 2018 uh, operating budget as presented. Any discussion or debate? I know that uh, council members will be intimately familiar after our discussion uh, during the budget uh, review. Um, and I guess, uh, as a reminder, this budget is built around the uh, strategic plan, which council members would have seen in our package of the last council. Um, the upcoming strategic, part, strategic discussion that council will have in the new year uh, will be the opportunity for us to set our course. Um, and administration uh, presented some details with respect to how they're going to approach that budget development uh, utilizing the priority-based budgeting system. So I just want to provide that context. And unless I see anybody else in the queue, I will call for the vote. Okay, okay please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and we can move on to a motion on capital budget. Thank you very much. I move that Council approve the capital budgets for 2018 as presented. Okay, thanks very much, Council O'Toole. Any discussion or debate with respect to the capital budget as presented? I don't see anybody in the queue. I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries with one opposed. I believe that handles all of our business with respect to the 2018 operating and capital budgets. Uh, thank you uh, to our management team for your hard work in putting that together in relatively short order with some significant adjustments, uh, both from this council and the last council, asking for some different scenarios. Uh, appreciate the fact that we've got the organization in a place where we can move start the new year with an approved budget. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to committee business and starting with 9.1, Community Living Committee from December 5th. Councillor Thiessen, I think that was your... That was my committee. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I would move that council receive the minutes of the Community Living Committee held uh, Tuesday, December 4th, as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Thiessen. And the city manager leaned over and said, well, hold on, Mr. Mayor. He didn't say that. He just sort of... 8.2, right? Yeah, 8.2. Thank you. Oh, can I start that? 
Um, well, we will move on to 8.2, which was written down on my page uh, that I jumped over just like Councillor Clayton jumped over it too. She started up, anyway. No need to lay any blame there, it was me. Anyhow, uh, so item 8.2, item 8.2 is uh, public member appointments to City of Grand Prairie boards, um, agencies and boards. And so we uh, have a number, we have um, I think 10 different committees to deal with. Uh, well, I'll start with uh, on my left hand side with Councillor Thiessen and a motion with respect to the Arts Development Committee. Councillor Thiessen. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, it is an honor that uh, I would move that Council appoint Alan Tibbles and Susanna Nito as public members to the Arts Development Committee effective January 1st, 2018 for terms ending December 31st, 2020. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, so we'll move next to the assessment review uh, board. Uh, Councillor Blackburn. We just have to get your microphone on that one. Thanks, Councilor Blackburn. Thank you. I would move that uh, Council appoint Rory Tarrant as a public member to the Assessment Review Board, effective January 1st, 2018, for a term ending January 30, sorry, December 31st, 2020. Thanks very much, Councilor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Uh, we'll move on to number three on our list uh, with respect to the Combative Sports Commission. Councillor Pallad, are you prepared to do that one for us? Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, I move that uh, Council appoint, and I apologize if you're watching this at home, if I bought your name, but Darren Metzeller and Nathan Petrie as public members of the Combative Sports Commission, effective January 1st, 2018, for terms ending December 31st, 2020 and further appoint Dr. Cled Lewis as the ex officio non-voting member referred to as the commissioner doctor for term ending December 31st, 2021. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Palat. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Okay. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and that'll take us to the Community Enhancement Advisory Committee. Uh, Councillor Friesen, are you ready for that one? I am, thank you, Mayor Given. <clears throat> I move that Council appoint Rebecca Keyes and Jody Noel as public members to the Community Enhancement Advisory Committee, effective January 1st, 2018, for terms ending December 31st, 2020, and further appoint Ms. Chelsea Lewis as the representative of Aquaterra Utilities, Inc. to the Enhancement Advisory Committee, effective January 1st, 2018, for a term ending December 31st, 2020. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Again, seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Okay, I believe uh, next up was the Economic Development Advisory Committee in our list. Uh, I'll go to Councillor Minhas. Councillor Minhas. So I, th I think this was the one difference was on this one, uh, Management was going to uh, reconsider the role of the Economic Development Advisory Committee. Um, and so we may table the discussion of this one until uh, after a council strategic planning session. Councilor Minhas. Thank you, Mayor well given. I put this motion into the table for next meeting, or 90 days. I think it's after the conclusion of the council strategic planning uh, session. Of the conclusion uh, strategic session, then we move it. Thanks very much, Councilman Haas. That was a last minute change. Appreciate you stepping in to be able to do that for us. Any discussion or debate? Uh, I'll just maybe speak to the intent here. Um, as I said, uh, management uh, advised that they would be able to review the mandate of this committee. And so before appointing any public members, we just want to make sure that we have the mandate uh, correct um, and uh, ensure that we're effectively using the time of anybody that we'd appoint to that committee. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. 
That motion carries. Thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. And we'll move to Councillor Clayton for the Grand Prairie Airport Commission. Councillor Clayton. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council appoint Fletcher, Boodle, and Don Nadiak as public members to the Grand Prairie Airport Commission effective January 1st, 2018, for terms ending December 31st, 2020. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, any discussion or debate on that motion? And seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, we'll move to Councillor O'Toole for the Grand Prairie Public Library Board. Councillor O'Toole. Oh, just have to get your microphone there, Councillor O'Toole. Just looking here at the notes we've got here, Public Library. I move the Council appoint Tammy Brown, Nicole Chop Chappell, and Thomas Blake as public members to the Grand Prairie Library Board, effective January 1st, 2018, for terms ending December 31st, 2020. Okay. I apologize for the writing that was on this script because somebody beside me was in a hurry, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Councilor O'Toole. Any uh, discussion or debate on that motion? Penmanship aside, uh, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Motion carries, and that'll take us to uh, Councillor Bressy. And Councillor Bressy, can you handle the Pursuit of Excellence Committee? Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move the Council appoint Aaron Penson and Tammy Brown as public members. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. As public members of the Pursuit of Excellence Committee, effective January 1st, 2018, for terms ending December 31st, 2020. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Again, seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thanks very much, Council Ressi. Uh, and that'll take us to uh, the Revolution Place Advisory Board. I'll look to Councillor Thiessen for that motion. Well, I'm excited. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Given. I would uh, move that Council appoint Lloyd Fisher, Don Mapunga, Doug McGuire, and Raphael Bowman as public members to the Revolutionary Place Advisory Board effective January 1st, 2018 for terms ending December 31st, 2019. And further appoints Aaron Haste, Marnie Young, Steve Harvard, and Joan Godbout as public members to the Revolutionary Place Advisory Board, effective January 1st, 2018, for terms ending December 31st, 2020. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, any discussion or debate on that motion? Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I just uh, think there was a little bit of a juggle there. Of one individual was appointed as a sponsorship representative and not a public member. Um, Mr. Raphael Bowman was identified as um, going to be identified as the sponsorship representative, not a public member. Yeah, the the board does have a position for the title sponsor, a representative from the title sponsor, and yeah, so I think uh, fair to acknowledge it in, yeah. in that phrasing. Sure. Yeah. Councilor Thiessen, okay with that? I'm okay with that, as amended. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the motion other than that? Uh, other than to say that I think uh, the revolutionary place would be in France, maybe. I don't know. Uh, we have a revolution place, though. Um, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, and we'll move on to Subdivision and Development Appeal Board. Councillor Blackburn. Mic on. <laughs> Jack? I think I would move to, um, uh, for council to appoint Linda Murphy, Richard Kesselbeck, and Rory Tarrant as public members to the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board, effective January 1st, 2018, for terms ending December 31st, 2020. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on that motion? And again, seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. I think that handles all of our items of business with respect to 8.2 and any, any ones that aren't printed on our agenda already. Uh, and so now we can move on to 9.1, uh, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much. And I'm glad that we actually went back in time a little bit on our agenda because I just noticed 
there's a date that's wrong on this, uh, so I'm going to change it verbally. Uh, it says December 4th, but I will move that council receive the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held Tuesday, December 5th, 2017, as presented. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions that we need to correct before we adopt them? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. We had a few motions coming out of community living uh, that meeting that day. Uh, the first being large-scale tourism events. An application came in from the East Coast Garden Party. And I would move that council approve funding in the amount of $50,000 to the East Coast Garden Party Association with the return of the $7,000 grant received this year from the Arts Development Festival funding. Uh, speaking to this motion, uh, this did come forward to committee at an earlier time and was asked to return with more information, uh, which uh, the group did come back and presented us as much information as, as they had. Uh, Pre-ticket sales stated that there's about 32.75% of all ticket goers came from out of town, which was pretty close to what we wanted for 35% uh, to mandate the use of this, uh, this fund. Um, and uh, with that, uh, all of the... I guess the obligations of that group were met and uh, committee chose to approve this with the return of the funding. It's also important to note that that funding, uh, we had this discussion at the Arts Development, we thought it might be coming back for more festival funding. Uh, being as we're deciding on that tonight, uh, it's just gonna get rolled over into our public art reserve, that $7,000 left over extra, so. Okay, thanks Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on this motion? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Well, I'm still going. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> Move right along. Uh, I got uh, Grand Prairie Regional Recreation Committee uh, approval of the terms of reference, and in that, I'll move the council approve the terms of reference for the Grand Prairie Regional Recreation Committee. I just briefly speak into this motion. Uh, the committee had discussed it after review. We did note that there was some um, language changing that might need to be changed within it, but nothing too serious that couldn't allow us to pass it here tonight. So the administration took note of that at the committee meeting and is going to bring that forward to the committee for potential future changes. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, next up is electronic fair management system. And to that degree, I would move that Council Award RFP 15-553-17 to payment in motion for the electronic fair management system, EFMS, in the amount of $597,935 and no cents, excluding GST as the highest evaluated proponent. Uh, speaking to this motion, uh, our transit department has been working hard and diligent in establishing this electronic fare system to uh, mitigate the, the potential for fare theft, also as a means to better track our customers and collect data so that we can find the most appropriate routes and hopefully save money in the long haul with our transit system. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, that motion's open for discussion debate. Councillor Clayton. A question, uh, maybe Councillor Thiessen or administration can tell me when will this be implemented? Thiessen. I'm going to defer over to Director Miyagi. Director Miyagi. Yeah, through the chair, uh, we are hoping to have the system uh, up and running uh, in September uh, of this year. Uh, it takes a couple of months to have the business rules applied to the software and whatnot. So uh, if we can get it in sooner, we will do that. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that question, Councillor Clayton. Uh, I don't see any other Questions arising? Seeing no further discussion or debate, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen, I think you're nearly near to the end. Nearly done, and you know what? It was a it was a long meeting that day, so I'm I don't think we have anything else to discuss. All only serious business, but uh, in this serious business, I'm going to move that uh, council postpone item nine point one point four. Disabled Transportation uh, Society uh, for the implementation plan uh, to the 20, January 29th, 2018 regular meeting of council to allow for administration time to work out details of the transition and the opportunities that it presents. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. So this is a motion that's different than uh, as in the printed council package. 
motion to postpone consideration uh, of the elements there. Uh, the intent is to allow administration opportunity to look at all the different variables and uh, potential uh, opportunities to ensure the continuance of um, specialized transit in the community. Um, of course, there's a v number of different ways that that could happen, and so this gives administration some opportunity to check those different paths and get back to council. Yeah. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen, anything else you want to highlight from that seven minutes? No, I'll defer to corporate services at this moment. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor O'Toole, Councillor Thiessen has just deferred to you, so um, take it for what it's worth, I guess. Uh, Councillor There's no deferring. I have a spot in the agenda. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor O'Toole. Mayor Given, thank you very much. I move the council receive the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee being, meeting held uh, Tuesday, December 5th as presented, okay. 2017. Thanks very much, Council O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions? Seeing none, then I will call for the motion, or call for the vote to adopt them. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Council O'Toole, anything you wanted to highlight tonight's set of minutes? We had uh, one uh, delegation show up to discuss some concerns with the assessment and taxation. Uh, we had a very good conversation. They had a number of questions that needed to be asked on their part, and we were able to give them the answers that they may not have liked, but they understood when they left, and uh, they uh, felt okay at the end of the meeting that... Uh, they got a good, clear, defined understanding on, on where we were at and why they have to pay what they pay. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, Councillor Clayton, I think you're next up. Uh, I would move that uh, Council accept the minutes of the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, December 12th, 2017, as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? And seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, as an uh, earlier delegation uh, had came to speak briefly to the upcoming bylaw, I would move that Council give first reading to bylaw C-1365 being um, the utility bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. So I'll call for the vote on first reading of bylaw C-1365. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would give a second reading to bylaw C-1365. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. So I'll open it up to discussion and debate on bylaw C-1365. Any discussion or debate related to the utility bylaws proposed? I don't see anybody in the queue. So I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that we have third reading of bylaw C-1365 at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. So a motion to have third and final reading here tonight. Uh, this motion must pass unanimously in order for us to have that third and final reading. Uh, if it doesn't pass unanimously, then it would come back at our subsequent council meeting. Any discussion or debate as to the merits of having third and final reading here tonight? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council give third reading to bylaw C-1365, being the utility bylaw. Speaking briefly to this, uh, this bylaw is to replace the current utility bylaw for the City of Grand Prairie, and Aquaterra and the City have worked together uh, to modernize this bylaw with up-to-date technical changes. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council give first reading to bylaw C-1366, being the lot grading bylaw. Okay. Thanks very much, Council Clayton. I'll call for first uh, vote for first reading on 1366. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would give second reading to bylaw 
C-1366. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, so in second reading, we're open for discussion and debate. Councillor Pallott. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, I just have a question for administration on this. Um, do we have a mechanism or do we monitor and track the numbers of issues we currently deal with here with the lot grading? Sure, so question to uh, management uh, or with respect to uh, number of issues arising with current lot grading. Who's gonna handle that one? Whoever gets their microphone on first. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, currently, administration does have uh, set up to uh, track all of our changes or any concerns that uh, residents have with the lock rating at this point. Okay. Answer reply. I guess just further to that, are, are we, this bylaw has been around for quite a few years now, we're about to make a change. Are the is there a kind of a volume of number that you can like, or is this 10, 10 issues a year, 20 issues a year, 30 issues? Just trying to get my head around how many issues a year we'd been, we were having with this. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I guess this bylaw right now is to deal with, I guess it deals more with the um, new properties coming online that are coming through. I don't have the number uh, with me at the time as to how many we're having per year, um, but we do have that information available. Okay. That would be great. I just, I guess, my, my my hope was that if we knew how many numbers it was that this this bylaw was going to capture, that we're hoping to reduce those numbers. Um, so, just one more point for a question, I guess. So, Councillor Plot, is there some information that you'd like circulated to council? If if that's possible, I would love to kind of if if we could look at this bylaw. Has been, I think it was two thousand nine when it came in or ten. If we kind of had a history of you know where we were at before the bylaw came in and of how many issues or concerns and kind of year by year how it's how it's helping. So we can measure the effectiveness of the bylaw and, and with these changes to hopefully see how we're going to watch that even improve over time. So, so the, uh, the request for information would be uh, some sort of um, review of the number of uh, complaints or concerns related to lot grading. Um, I just want to clarify intent is really to see um, what mischief this bylaw is solving. Is that, yeah, that's yeah. correct. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Councillor Plot, if that's circulated to council members by email, uh, and then if it's something that uh, anybody wants to follow up on, we could bring that through committee. Is that fair enough? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Blatt. Uh, any other discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing no one in the queue, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that Council... Uh, have third reading of bylaw C-1366 at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Yeah, you heard me just uh, on our last uh, utility bylaw. Um, this is a motion to have third and final reading. It must pass unanimously, otherwise it will, this uh, will come back at a subsequent council meeting. Is there any discussion and debate as to the merits of having third and final reading? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Mayor Given, I would move that Council give third uh, reading to bylaw C-1366, being the lot grading bylaw, and just briefly speaking to it, in addition to uh, better dispute resolution, it also updated languages and, and, and is streamlining the application process uh, in the new bylaw. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, any other discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Motion carries. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Anything else you want to highlight for us? Sure. Just uh, briefly, um, we had a, a quarterly update from RCMP. Superintendent McKenna uh, was there and, and provided a verbal update on levels of crime, which uh, most people have heard have been significantly reduced. Uh, as well, uh, a traffic enforcement update uh, um, was presented uh, in regards to the positive effects of um, reducing motor vehicle crimes, or sorry, rather collisions within our city. Um, and I think that was about it. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, and then I'll take us to 9.4, the Arts Development Committee from December 13th, Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mary Given. I would uh, move that Council receive the minutes of the Arts Development Committee meeting held Wednesday, December 13th, 2017, as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions we need to correct? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. 
Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Blackburn, any highlights you want to raise for us? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the Arts Development Committee uh, distributed some money last week. Um, we had uh, for uh, scholarships and individual project funding, we had $2,500 available and we split it between um, uh, Nadine Park and then Courtney War for uh, their book, The Girl Who Was Brave Enough, and uh, $1,250 also to um, Alison Hodgen uh, to write and publish her memoir, Female Flying Solo. Both very interesting projects. I won't go into the details now, but uh, uh, they certainly deserve the support. And then under applications for festival funding, uh, we awarded the uh, Grand Prairie Children's Festival Association um, 10000 sorry, uh, yes, $10,000 and uh, to the Alberta North Destination Imagination Society, we awarded $4,000. Um, again, worthwhile uh, initiatives that, um, that mean a lot to, to uh, the youth in Grand Prairie and um, they were great proposals. We're looking forward to seeing successful events. Great. Thanks for that update, Councillor Blackburn. Uh, I think that handles all of our committee business. Uh, we have no items of correspondence this evening. Uh, our delegation business, I think, the presentation from Mr. Mans was related to item 9.3.1, the utility bylaw, and so I believe that's been dealt with. Uh, we have no notices of motion, so that'll take us to council member reports. Uh, and we'll start off with uh, reports from council members related to, uh, I think the first that I have is the Grand Prairie Library Board, uh, Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Yes, this was my first um, public library board meeting since uh, since being appointed. Um, a, a good group, very dedicated to uh, to the public library and uh, and its success. Uh, they reviewed some of the programs that they offer, and uh, it's really um, it's really very comprehensive what they provide. It was also the last meeting for outgoing Chairman Susan Bansgrove, and. Um, uh, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to serve on the committee with her any longer than one meeting, but uh, certainly the board wished her well, and we're looking forward to starting with a new chairman to be selected in January. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Uh, we'll move on to Grand Prairie Youth Council. Councillor Friesen. Thank you. This was my first youth council meeting, and it was as much a, a really Christmas cheer as it was council, so I got to meet uh, the kids and understand about their committees, and it was very exciting to me. I think we've got a smart bunch of kids there, and I'm looking forward to, uh, in in particular, there's a couple of committees that I'm uh, interested in, and uh, health and wellness, of course, with my nursing background, and so I just very much looking forward to working with them over the next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Friesen, for uh, getting started with that committee, uh, and we'll go to Councillor Clayton with the Regional Recreation Master Plan Committee. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, myself, Mayor Gibbon, and uh, Councillor Pallott attended the most recent uh, Recreation Management um, or Master Plan Committee meeting. Uh, it was an opportunity for everybody uh, with new council representatives to get together uh, from the regional sort of representation of what's going forward in assessing our inventory on recreation. Um, at that time, uh, there was a motion uh, approved to hire a coordinator uh, to sort of put the uh, master plan to the next step. Uh, and it was, uh, and that person will be facilitated out of uh, the Crosslink Centre, um, or possibly sorry, out of out of a county facility. wasn't identified at that time, but uh, um, sort of was in full support of, from all the uh, people at the table. So uh, it looks like the regional uh, recreation plan is going to the next steps. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, we'll move on to South Peace Regional Archive Society, Councillor Pilat. Thanks, Mary Gibbon. Um, I had my first meeting with this group, a pretty passionate group about archives, which was not something I know a lot about, so it's, uh, it's going to be a good learn for me. Um, the big thing on their agenda, and I guess something that will be probably coming to council at some point in the next year here, is that, or in, that, in 2018, is uh, uh, expansion or more needed space for their facility. Um, so I'll, I'll keep you up to date on, on those meetings as I go. Thanks very much, Councillor Plott. Uh, and were there any other external agencies, boards, or commissions that somebody's planning on uh, up, writing an update to council on? Okay. Okay. 
Thank you very much. And thanks, council members, for your updates. Appreciate everybody sort of getting started and into the swing of things with uh, all of our new committees. Um, we'll start with council member roundtable. We'll start with councillor Bressy. Well, thank you, Mayor Given. One event I want to highlight was I went to an HIV North hosted event on supervised consumption sites. And to start off, there was a lot of statistics, some scary. I think the scariest statistic for me was out of 200 people surveyed uh, that were struggling with addiction, 45% said they tried to access treatment in the last six months and weren't able to because there was no bed available for them. So that was a clear advocacy priority that I know is already on our radar, but that was a startling statistic for me. There was also, as they were talking about supervised consumption sites, they had a they had a snapshot from a bunch of sites around the world. A promising one was from, well, actually a typical one was from Sydney, Australia. And since opening, they'd had 930,000 injections. And what was exciting to me is 70% of the businesses surrounding it and 78% of the residents surrounding it, when they were surveyed, said they strongly supported the site. So that was great for me. Just to put on everybody's radar, HIV North is hoping to have two uh, mobile consumption sites online by April. And a little nugget for administrations in our head is that one way they're hoping we can maybe help them out is they're struggling to figure out how they're going to secure storage for those mobile sites. So that's an ask they might be making. That might be an easy win for us to partner with them. Thanks, Councillor Bressy. Uh, we'll start with uh, next, sorry, with Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much. Sorry, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I attended a number of events this uh, last two weeks, and one that kind of brought a little joy to my face and mind was the seniors' outreach new offices, and they had an open house. If you had ever been to their old offices, it was very compact and crowded. Uh, they've got a little bit of room now that they can. Uh, actually do stuff without having to sit on someone else's knee or lap. Uh, also, I attended the uh, Army Cadets uh, Christmas Mess, and that's not necessarily a mess. It was a meal for those of you that don't uh, have a military background, and it was very well attended, and uh, that's just a few of them I'll highlight. Thank you. Thanks very much, Council Tool. Councilor Clayton. Thank you, Mayor Given. Just uh, one that I'll highlight uh, for today. Uh, the Grand Prairie Volunteer Services Bureau held their annual breakfast where they have an opportunity to thank all the many numerous organizations and people across the community that volunteer to continue to help make our community be successful. Uh, that day, Mayor Given and, and um, uh, Reeve Beaupre uh, read the proclamation and it was uh, well attended by uh, city councillors and it was a great celebration early in the morning. Much, Councillor Clayton. Councillor Minhas. Thank you very much, Mayor Wilgiven. Uh, I was in Chamber AGM. They elected new aid board uh, on December 6th. That was uh, well done. They got very good people in there again. And they did a few more things, but um, today was more excitement. I was Santa in the hospital, child and ward. <laughs> it's been uh, 10 years. Yeah, this is the 10th year we've been doing it, me and Alino, from uh, our revolution side. And the star, that is very helpful and give some kids they're sick there and give the courage to them. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. Councillor Friesen. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, I thought that it was a quiet couple of weeks until I just about filled my page as I sat and reflected on what I'd done. Um, I'd like to highlight, uh, I was had the opportunity to attend a blanket exercise, uh, and there happened to be with me a city employee, and uh, we both greatly enjoyed the blanket exercise. What that is, for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to attend and participate in one, it gives the, the perspective of what colonialization has done over the years and generations with our Aboriginal community. And uh, so as this city employee and I talked about it uh, on the way out after we had a debriefing and everything, we thought it would be something very interesting for certain departments uh, in particular in the in the city. So that'll be something that uh, we'll bring forward in the new year. Um, and I also got to, uh, I spent an evening serving hot chocolate out at the Northern Spirit Light Show. And that's an example of a nonprofit that... Uh, gives back to other nonprofits. It's it's pretty cool. They do take their proceeds and you can if anyone for anyone who's listening, if uh, you have a nonprofit that needs some funding and it's just a you know a little bit or an unusual expense for you, you can actually apply to the Northern Spirit Light Show. 
to receive some of their profits. So I greatly enjoyed that evening and the event. It's always gorgeous. Make sure you uh, get out there this year. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Palat. Thanks, Mayor Given. Um, I, get, I had two that I kind of want to hide out and just one just for more for fun, but uh, a bunch of council members here and some county council members went for flu shots and I thought it was fun that we all shared in some pain together. Um, but anyways, my other one was um, actually with the chamber event that they do a, a monthly kind of mixer and, and this last month was at uh, Bear Creek Funeral Home and I, I, I just want to speak, um, I'm sitting beside the council member, but I, I was I really enjoyed going to this uh, thing because I always love when you go to businesses that are either new or, or expanding their business and the, the growth of the potential of Grand Prairie area. Um, Well-received event, very good comments, and it was nice to see very passionate owners as, as uh, Eunice and Doug are with their business. It was also the first chamber event I've attended since budget, so I did take some rib punching for not getting to 0% as I had promised. So it was my first event where I officially got to, uh, to get beat up. I see some smiles over there from Jackie, so anyways. Those, that's my highlights. <laughs> that's probably Jackie's highlights too. Uh, thanks very much, Councillor Pla Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mary Given. Um, I also attended the uh, Volunteer Services Bureau Volunteer Breakfast. A, a great turnout, and, and what a what a a good tribute to volunteers in our community. What I'd like to highlight are two things. Uh, I attended the uh, AGM for the Chamber of Commerce, and. Um, um, Again, a very successful organization in our city and uh, just wanted to pass along congratulations to the, uh, the new and the returning officers for, uh, for the chamber. Uh, I know that they're, they're up for some uh, good works in, uh, in 2018. The other thing that I attended that I wanted to highlight is the Community Foundation Grants Celebration. Uh, Community Foundation once a year does a celebration and presentation where they um, they present grants to students, uh, to organizations, and to charities. And uh, they granted a total of $168,010 to, to groups in the community, uh, the, the greater Grand Prairie community um, at this event. Uh, it was very well attended, and you could tell that those people that received um, grants were, were very appreciative. Um, it was a good event. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Um, I'm only going to highlight one one event, but I got to say the last seven weeks has been a highlight for me, being the Deputy Mayor of Grand Prairie and uh, you know, picking up a little extra slack, cutting extra ribbons, giving extra speeches. It's all been a lot of fun. Uh, on my last day, though, I did not uh, take undertake uh, Deputy Mayor duties, but technically I did, because uh, it was one of those Facebook requests that you pick up, and uh, it's like two minutes after it was sent, you're like, what? And it was for the GP charity dinner, and I, I, I went there, even though I was asked personally, I was also asked to come and give greetings, perhaps, for the mayor, and I thought, well, it's my last day as Deputy Mayor, I might as well do that, so this uh, took place at the Friendship Center on uh, December 8th. I was the only member of council that, that made it in attendance, and I was very thankful for people like Gord Pankratz, uh, who have stuck it out in the community for for years and have put this uh, th an event like this together for the less fortunate in, in uh, Grand Prairie. He did scale it down a bit in size, but uh, the place was packed and full. And uh, it's heartwarming and heart-wrenching to see that there's that kind of need out in our community. But uh, I'm very thankful for a person such as Gord who uh, go out of their way to ensure that everybody has the most merriest of seasons and has something to look forward to each and every year. So. Uh, to Gord and to the team at the Friendship Center. Thanks so much for putting that on again. Thanks for inviting me. It was my honor to be the mayor for one last day uh, for you as the deputy. Uh, and I don't mind uh, accepting that kind of invitation on Facebook. It's rare uh, that I do that in an official, semi-official capacity. But thanks so much. Uh, there is need in our community and every person that chips in uh, lessens that need. So thanks so much. Very much, Councillor Thiessen. Um, and uh, Council, there are a couple of things that I probably should have reported on uh, during the uh, committees, or the, sort of the external agency boards and commissions, uh, one being AUMA board. Uh, my apologies, I'm not used to calling my own number uh, when we do that. Uh, but I did uh, last week attend an AUMA board meeting. Uh, it was their orientation and then uh, the initial startup meeting. Uh, we did a very similar sort of thing that we just did here in terms of signing a committees. Uh, I can report that uh, we have two members of city administration that are serving on committees. Our city manager, Mr. Bob Nicolay, is uh, on the infrastructure uh, committee. 
and uh, Director Galante is on the uh, Community Safety Committee, and I will be serving on the Municipal Governance Committee. So Grand Prairie is pretty well represented on uh, three out of the four standing committees of AUMA. Um, and uh, I also um, uh, will serve on a number of other external committees uh, representing AUMA. So certainly appreciate the opportunity to be there. Um, we also had a alert Board of Directors meeting, uh, which I attended via conference call from uh, upstairs in City Hall. Uh, and focus mostly around uh, governance matters with respect to alert and um, uh, what the governance model for the alert board of directors might look like in the future. And uh, finally, uh, one that I don't believe has been reported on uh, was uh, opioid task force meeting. Uh, worked with uh, community social development to host a second meeting of a community uh, task force on opioids, uh, just working to identify some priority items that will eventually form the basis of a community plan uh, that likely will uh, happen over the next number of months, and I'll report to Council in more detail on uh, what activities that group is undertaking. Uh, and with that, I think we have uh, can call our meeting adjourned. Thank you. Adjourned. All right.